One of the hardest things about weight loss over 40 is getting your nutrition right. How many calories should you be eating? What's the right balance of protein, carbs and fats? In other words, macronutrients. Hello fam and welcome to my channel. My name's Melissa Neal and this channel is all about helping you if you're a woman over 40 or like me over 50 get in fantastic shape. And in this video I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to calculating your calories, in other words that's the energy you're consuming, and calculating your macronutrients. So that's your balance of your protein, carbohydrates, hydrates and fats. You need to be eating based on macronutrients and that's going to mean weighing and measuring your food. And I know when a trainer first advised me to do this 20 years ago, my eyes glazed over and I just thought there is no way that I wanted to do that. And I never did and instead I actually just focused on getting plenty of protein in at every single meal. And when I was in my mid-30s, that was absolutely okay. I actually saw really good results with that but as I got older and I hit my late 40s and I was going on my transformation journey that just didn't work anymore. Why? Because you need to start getting really precise about your food if you want to see results. It's not the only thing but that one thing can make a massive difference, can be an absolute game changer if you start to implement what I'm going to show you today. So first of all, I'm going to talk about calories and you want to be thinking about being in a calorie deficit, which just means burning more energy than you're putting in. That's all it means, calorie deficit. Go on to an online calorie calculator and I'm going to show you what you do next. We're on calculator.net, which is forward slash calorie calculator and I'm going to put the link in the description but we're going to sort of plug some numbers in now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to US units imperial units now you put your age in here at the top so I'm 55 I'm female I put my height and then my weight in pounds but you can always do this in metric if you need to so my weight is 123 pounds and I'm going to put my activity levels as very active because I do a lot of intense exercise. I don't work out seven times a week, it's five or six times a week. But you know, these are heavy activities. I'm currently doing strength training workouts and cardio workouts. So that's a lot there. So you put in your activity levels and then just press calculate and up the top there, it's actually given me my maintenance calories, what I need to eat in calories per day if I want to maintain my calories. And I want to just take that number and ignore everything else because as you can see here, it's trying to encourage you. I would say the one at the bottom, no one wants to go on extremely low calories like that. That's just way too low. So you just want to take the maintenance calories and do the rest for yourself, which I'm going to explain how you do this. Once you've been on that calculator and you've got your maintenance calories, so you saw there that mine were 1,936, what you want to do is subtract anywhere between 200 to 400 calories from that and that's going to give you that calorie deficit. So that means you're going to be burning more energy than you're putting in. What I would advise you to do is only take those maintenance calories. Don't take the calories that they're recommending to get you into a deficit. What will happen is you take your calories too low and that's really detrimental. So that means you're going to lose muscle mass and you're going to lose weight rapidly. But the problem with that is you lose a lot of muscle mass and you can't sustain it in the long term. If you want to lose weight and you want to keep it off for good, you want to go in a deficit of about 200 to 400 calories. So I'm going to go in the middle ground and I'm just going to take off just under 
300 calories from my maintenance calories and we're now going to plug that number so I'm going to take 1690 as my calorie deficit and plug that number into my fitness pal so we're in my fitness pal and I want to go into goals which is here I'm going to press goals and under nutrition goals I want to go to the tab that's at the top calories carbs proteins and fats because that's where we're going to take our numbers and start plugging them in now at the moment it's all over the place so i want to start putting in sort of carbohydrates we're going to do this in percentages so what we want to do is have 35 percent protein 35 percent carbs and 30 percent fats now at the moment because the calories are set so low that actually doesn't work so i'm going to need to go back in and set the calories up so that they're on the 1,690 that we agreed, and then that's recalculated them. So now you can see it's actually giving the allowance in grams. So I've got 148 grams of carbs, 148 grams of protein, and 56 grams of fat. So that looks really good. So I'm now going to go back and go to my diary. And you can see here, I can start actually logging the food. And it's going to be set to that goal of calories. If we go into nutrition at the bottom, we can see as we're logging exactly what we're eating, how much protein we've eaten, how much fat we've eaten, how many carbs we've eaten. So we can log that through the day. And to ensure that you're taking in enough protein, please remember that you need one gram of protein for every pound in your body weight. Or if you weigh over 170 pounds, shoot for your goal body weight. And that's per day. You can use chronometer as well as MyFitnessPal. It doesn't really matter, but what I found with chronometer is it tends to be more accurate, but the benefit of MyFitnessPal is it has nearly every single food that you can imagine. So, you know, if you live in Europe or the USA, almost anything that you buy in the supermarket is gonna be listed and you can just scan that in. So it makes it really easy for you. And the other thing is with MyFitnessPal, you can also have meals out. They're often listed, the sort of big branded restaurants, the chains, they're listed in my fitness pals as our takeouts. What I found when I was in a calorie deficit, I was dropping a little bit of body fat back in 2022. I was eating out and I was actually eating takeouts as well because I could track everything in my fitness pal. So it just gives you a lot of flexibility. So let me know in the comments section whether you found that helpful and I would love to know if you're going to start using this and actually how you get on with implementing this and just as a reminder I have a free nutrition guide and I'm also going to link it in the description and it goes into a lot more detail about how you should be handling your nutrition and there's even a sample meal plan in there.